Hi everybody, my name is Kat Kerr and I wanted to welcome you to my new class, The Collector. Now when I say The Collector in this workshop, I'm actually referring to The Creative Collector, a term I just totally made up. Uh, and what it means to me is a creative collector is somebody that gathers um, supplies and materials and appreciates them not for what they are but for what they actually do to the creative what they offer to the creative which is inspiration and joy So I like to think of creatives like squirrels. We gather and collect and sometimes, you know how like squirrels put like nuts inside their mouth? That's how I feel sometimes. Like I just want to accumulate more and more stuff. And it wasn't until I actually started thinking about this workshop that I started questioning why. Why is it that I want every uh, supply out there? And um, I came up with some pretty interesting, um, pretty interesting ideas. So what I decided to do was I decided to go around my space and actually start taking pictures of some of these collections that I have here in my space. Um, small collections like a container of pencils or a gathering of paint or a bucket full of uh, rusty bits or um, you know anything and everything that I have that I have gathered with my hands and that I've categorized um, into these um, separate containers and so I went around and I started taking these pictures of of some of my collections and what I realized was that these collections actually mean more to me than I thought they did. Uh, initially, like I said before, I thought they were just um, tools to really um, help facilitate what creative idea I had floating around in my noggin, but I started to actually look at them just a little bit differently, and I started to appreciate um, not so much the value of them, but what they were actually offering me in return for taking the time to display them and to, um, you know, take care of them. Because the last thing I want to do is I don't I don't want to take these things um, for granted because these things actually define who I am and they have all been hand-picked by me they have been hand-placed by me they have been hand-selected and taken care of by me and there's a reason for that and the reason is that I love that I love to use them and I love and appreciate them so um, I'm very thankful to have all of these little um, you know, little uh, supplies of things that I guess I never really looked at them this way because I just thought they were more and more and more stuff. Um, but it wasn't until I started taking pictures of them that I realized that I was really putting in the effort to take care of them and to showcase them and to surround myself with them. that we take pride in what we have around us and that's something that we should take notice of. Uh, we get so caught up in the creating part of it that we actually forget to uh, recognize the process and what facilitates that process which is using these beautiful supplies that have been again hand-picked by us and hand placed by us and I think that's really really important to kind of stop and take a look at these beautiful collections that you have in your space you might not know they're there just yet but when you start taking pictures of them you're going to start noticing um, beautiful little things that um, perhaps you didn't notice before 
Now something else I noticed is that they're not all art supplies. I, I choose to surround myself with other types of collections. Uh, for example, I have a um, I have a collection of uh, vintage images, vintage photographs, and I love looking at them. I love displaying them. Uh, they um, are people that I do not know and they have histories that I do not know, but I can't help but let my imagination run wild thinking about who they were, what they did, what they loved, what their lives were like, and that to me is also a collection because it inspires and, um, you know, just gets the creative juices flowing. Uh, I also have a, a banner on my window, which is a banner of handwritten notes from friends, and that is a collection because it's so um, beautiful to me and I love reading these little hand messages. I also have a, um, a small collection of rocks that have been gifted to me. Um, some have been painted, some are heart-shaped rocks, some have words on them, and they're all little gifts from other creatives that I have purposefully chosen to display in my space and keep them close. And that's something that I treasure. So my goal for today's workshop is to pay homage to the ordinary. These supplies that we uh, tend to overlook, these collections that we tend to pass, these are the things that um, my hope is that we stop and take a look at and we pay respect to because they really help us to be who we are and do what we love to do. So what I would love for you to do is I would love for you first to go around and start taking pictures of some of your collections. Now, it could be anything. It could be a jar of pencils. It could be a container of paper clips. It could be a bin full of fabric scraps. I mean, I've got like three of those. So it could be anything. I also want you to pick out a small item to place in your bezel. Now, I guess I should show you guys what we're actually making, right? Because I tend to talk and just forget what the heck I'm talking about. So we're actually going to be making this bezel. It's a triangle winged bezel. And the finding on the inside is um, I like to collect little porcelain, little porcelain dolls. And this is just a little arm from one of the dolls. So I'd like for you to collect, um, to find something to place inside your bezel. And this is the journal that we're going to be making. Um, it's made out of watercolor paper. Okay, it's a pretty simple journal. We're gonna be using the gel press and paint and textures, even some textures of some of the things that we have laying around. So your homework for today is to take some pictures of your collections in your studio, to find something to fit inside your triangle bezel, and to also watch all of the videos before you get to work. Um, right after this one, there's going to be a short segment on um, uh, setting up your soldering station. If you're new to iron soldering, this is good for you because you're going to see how I set up the soldering station and how I hold my iron, a couple of safety issues. If you are, if you're very familiar with iron soldering, then just go ahead and skip it and go to the next segment. So I am super, super excited to have you here. And um, I think it's time we get to work, right? Because you're like, just shut up already. I know, I'm sorry, I talk a lot. But I'm really excited to have you here and let's get to work.
I started looking at them a little bit differently. I started looking at them as pieces that I handpicked. Each and every one was something that I picked um, 